Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following along with my exploration of uh, pens from China. When this one showed up a few weeks ago, I saw it and said, I got to get one. Um, so I did. I ordered one and it arrived today. And my first impressions are quite nice. The pen has some decent heft to it. It really feels great in the hand. And that look is unique. Yeah, nice if that had silver trim, but it doesn't. As I uh, will talk a few times, I originally ordered the gold version, but the seller told me that they had difficulty in manufacturing, so he offered me the silver one, so I said send it. Yeah, again, the pen just feels very, very good in the hand. It has that new style Moon Man number six nib, which I found it to write very well. Section is very similar. We'll do a comparison to an M1 pen later on. It fits very nicely in a hand. It feels good. You feel those threads in that step up, but they're not going to impede if you want to hold it up at that level. The pen does post, but it's very high. It makes for a very long pen and does change the weight. So it's not a pen that I think I would post a long writing. So the obvious pen to compare the M8 to is the Moon Man M1, which is a wooden version of the pen. And these are somewhat similar. Uh, we'll give you the weight difference. The sections are exactly the same. The end is a little bit more rounded on the M8 versus the M1, but that just might be using wood versus using, I want to call it a resin, but the manufacturing technique that they used was quite unique. And uh, the gold version uh, was not available when I tried to buy it. And they seem to be selling out very, very quickly on uh, both eBay and Etsy. So if it's something you're interested in, you might want to grab it. So these pens have exactly the same section, the same number six Moon Man nib. The wooden M1 is in two-tone, which is quite attractive, but on the M8, it's just solid gold. And like I said, it would have been nice if they used silver trim, but I'm certain with the sections being the same, they decided to stick with gold plating on the metal bits versus trying to use uh, rhodium, which would have went much better with that silver flecked finish of the pen. Both of these are cartridge converter pens, um, but the cartridges and uh, sorry, the converter is a little bit different. To me, this is much more of a upscale converter that's in the M8, but I don't like the spring. And the converter that was in the M1, I thought was a lower end converter with no insert here. But you know, all the bits here from the nib and the section are all interchangeable. So you can mix or match if that's what you desire. Just take a close-up of that nib, which again is the same in both pens, except it's two-tone in the M1 and uh, just gold tone in the M8. As I mentioned, the caps and parts are interchangeable. The M1 had a drawing out issue, but it has that plastic liner in there, just the same type of liner that's in the M8. So hopefully uh, the M8 stays, uh, the nib stays wetter than it did on the M1. Here's the M8 uh, disassembled about as much as most people are going to need to do it. All the bits and pieces fit together extremely well. And we have the new Moon Man number six style nib in this nib enclosure, which just screws in and out of the section. A nice upscale converter a nice little silicone insert in there. I'm not a fan of that spring, but I'll live with it. And this is just, it feels good in the hand. It feels very good in the hand. That metal insert, so you got metal on metal threads with the section. Certainly not going to eyedropper this pen. You know, one piece cap. We'll take a look inside of that, but hopefully you can see how there's uh, two layers to this material. So the outer layer has these metal chips in it, which just look quite interesting, quite different. I did order a gold one to go with the gold trim, but 
The seller informed me that the gold was having difficulty making it, so he offered me the silver one, so I said, send the silver one. I've since then ordered a multicolored one from uh, Bobby. They seem to be disappearing on eBay and Etsy. Here's what's left on eBay, and there's one left on Etsy. So this is a pen you're interested in. Who knows if they're going to be making more of them or if they made whatever they could. And when they're gone, they're gone. One never knows. You may ask, how big is the Moon Man M8? And I'll say, pretty darn big. Here we have an M800, a Pelican model, which is known for its size. The M1000 is obviously the largest and the most oversized, but the M800 is up there in size. Here's a relatively small Pilot Metropolitan and an Alami Safari. Let's pull the caps and look at the business end. Here we see them posted, and the M8 again pretty much matches the M800 in posted length, and the Safari is always a long pen posted, but these two come close. The sections are where the differences really become more apparent. The M8 has a very beefy section, the beefiest section of this group, much a uh, larger diameter and girth than the M800. There's no lip at the end. It's a straight conical shape. And it's actually a little longer than the M800, which isn't known for a long section. The section on the Pilot Metropolitan is long, but it's fairly small. And of course, the Lamy All-Star has its own unique triangular shaped section, which I'm not particularly a fan of, and these are two small nibs here. M8 has a number six size nib, which is correspondingly almost as big as the M800. You know, to really make it uh, show off, I could use of put the two-tone nib here from the M1, but I wanted to show the pens as received. So what ink to put in it? Uh, this ink called out to me. I haven't used it in a pen in recent memory. When you open up the cap, it has a very distinctive chemical smell, so if that's going to be something that you don't care for, then um, I would stay away from this particular ink. It is a dark purple, very nice purple. I find it an attractive color. The chromatography shows off a little bit of a mix, but not much. It's mostly purple. I don't know what that yellow is that's showing up there, but... What's really important is how it works in the pen. So I'm ready for that all important, how does the pen write? I think we need to just bring the lights in real close and admire this finish, which is fairly unique. Kind of is reminiscent a little bit of the Ebonite and pearl finish in the vintage Schaefer balance pens, but obviously this is one color. I have ordered the one which is supposedly multicolored from Bobby, and it was the last one he was selling on eBay, so I don't know whether they're going to get more or not. But the, fen, the pen feels very, very nice in the hand. It has that substantial feel to it, and it's the kind of pen that if you gave to somebody to try out, they would, I think, immediately feel it was a high-quality pen and probably a fairly expensive pen. You may have noticed in some of the earlier videos that that clip was slightly tilted to the left. But, you know, I gently moved it over, and now I think it's centered pretty well. The cap takes about one and three quarter turns to take off. So it's not a lot and it's certainly not one. So it's kind of in that sweet spot. And speaking of sweet spots, this feels very, very good in my hand. And to me with that number six nib is it's nice not having that lip at the end of the section because occasionally you might grip it down a little bit closer to that nib and you still have a fair distance to the paper because of the size of the nib.
So with the microphone next to the nib, hopefully you've heard how smooth the pen is. It does give you some decent feedback, kind of almost like a sailor feel. It is a stiff nib, but with a little bit of pressure, it'll ink out a little bit more ink, but that's something you're going to do on a regular basis. And it is pretty wet when you do that. So overall, I like the nib. I like the pen. I like the finish. I love the ergonomics. So where are we going to rate this pen? I'm going to rate it a 9.7 with two checks for the look and one check for writing. Let's look at the details. So for design, it's going to get three checks. For engineering, it's going to get three checks. For build, it's going to get three checks. For writing, it's going to get two checks. For look, it's going to get three checks. And for value, it's going to get two checks. So I think with a little bit of smoothing, just a minor amount, I think that nib can go from being good to great. And for value, this is north of $20, and I've, sometimes I've seen it as high as 30 As the first inventory sells out, who knows what the next inventory or the other pens that come on the market are going to be priced at. But it's certainly, I think, priced appropriate for what the pen is. But, you know, it is still that Moonman nib, which you can get on other pens, it's like the C1, which I fell in love with. So that's how we came to the 9.7. So we come to the end of this review. If you like this pen, definitely make an effort to find it. And, and if you're willing to pull the trigger, buy it. Because uh, it'll disappear and you never know whether the pen's going to come back or not. Considering what I've heard about the manufacturing difficulties, you don't know. So I mean, you find a pen you can fall in love with and enjoy putting ink on paper and encourages you put ink on paper share your thoughts read them later just the mere fact of putting ink on paper is i think a great creative experience so i've reached the end of this video we're going to say bye for now until the next video and this ink and nib combo works very very well